In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build an advanced property chatbot within VoiceFlow. Now, if you wanna get access to 10 plus chatbot and automation templates, you can go ahead and click my free resource hub link in the description. And if you're a business owner and you're not sure how AI can be implemented into your business, you can go ahead and book a call through my Calendly link where we can discuss how AI can be implemented in your business. Or if you've already got a project in mind, I'm happy to discuss that and I can help build it out for you. So to give you a quick demo on how this works, you're able to give the bot the exact property specifications that you want. If you want an apartment with two bedrooms in Liverpool, you're gonna get recommended a series of properties from a database. So this is built on top of the property recommendation system that are built out in a separate video, but we're gonna be building on that template and we're gonna build, be building out a much more advanced system. And so once we're recommended a property, it's gonna give us a series of information about that property. You're gonna be able to click learn more. Once you've hit learn more, you can ask anything you'd like. Now the most advanced feature that I've implemented into this bot is connecting it to the Google Maps API. And so this allows them to get a sort of awareness on where the property is located and sort of the uh, areas around it. So if they want to say, where's the nearest McDonald's, they're able to ask that. It's going to identify that that's what they're asking for. It's then going to send this information to the Google Maps API and it's going to pull back a series of information. So I said, where's the nearest McDonald's? So it's understood that you want to know how long it takes to get to the nearest McDonald's. It's been able to take that information and, and spit back. McDonald's is seven minutes away. Not only is it pulled back this information with the miles and the minutes, it's also given back a uh, embedded maps um, picture here. So you're going to be able to see this is where it's actually located. You can hit view larger map just to give you a general idea. Now, before I get right into it, I'm just going to show you a couple of other features that I've implemented as well. So another thing I've implemented is detecting if they're asking for another property. So if I go ahead and say, I want a house, uh, we're able to identify that they're not just asking about the previous property. They're asking about, they want to inquire on a, on a completely new property. And so if we just say that, um, it's able to identify uh, three sort of houses that it's picked up on um, from the database and then it's just served those and so we're able to continuously sort of chat in this conversational manner um, and obviously alongside this I want to say uh, show me this on the map so not only giving us directions but just giving us a general uh, map map point so I'm able to just say show me it on the map uh, it should be able to detect that that's what I want here it is here's probably on the map um, and now here we are. So we've been able to see that this property uh, on this specific map view, we can just hit view larger map. And so hopefully this gives you a good idea as to how this system works um, in sort of the conversation sense. We're able to just generally ask what we want and detect what they need. Now to get started on the project, don't get too overwhelmed. I'm gonna be breaking this down as exactly as to what everything does and why everything's there. And so obviously, like I said earlier, this is built on top of the property recommendation system that I built out in a previous video. So. Uh, all the sort of colored blocks here from the, the blue here in the blue. This is all the property recommendation chatbot template that I built out uh, in the previous video. And you can get access to that template through my free resource hub uh, in the description. Uh, and so that's, you can just copy that. But what I'm really gonna be focusing on is this section here. And so uh, these sort of four sections are all the same. It's just to uh, help connect it to the existing property recommendation bot. But I'm gonna be going through essentially this uh, section of blocks and this is how we're able to build this really advanced sort of uh, back and forth Google Maps API connection. So to go ahead and build this system, what I've done is I've obviously connected this to the previous system. And once I hit learn more, it's gonna move over to the uh, sort of start block here. And so this start block is just saying, ask me anything about address, so pretty simple. It's gonna capture that message and go to a check for new property. And so the check for new property is just a set AI step. And the goal of this set AI step is to just understand whether or not they're asking for one thing or the other. And so in this case, we're asking if they're, or we're checking if they're asking for a new property recommendation. Um, if they are, we're gonna output redirect. And if they're not, we're gonna output continue. And so that's just output this or this, and then make a decision based on that. And so this is just the big prompt we've used. And we're able to, obviously, if somebody asks for a different uh, property, using the redirect, send that to an if condition. And so that if condition goes directly to here, where it just says, if new property contains redirect, um, we can go somewhere, or if it, else go somewhere else um, and says so how we're able to direct the conversation based on the answer we were given or the question we were given and so essentially that's the premises for the entire build we're just using this sort of check prompt and then we're running it through an if condition and that's how we're then uh, determining which uh, block we should run and so if new property contains redirect it goes off to set query and so set query is just the start block for running a whole new set of recommendations if you've watched the previous property video so that will just run it again 
because obviously they've asked for a different property. Otherwise else, it's now gonna check for a floor plan. So another feature I've added is show me the floor plan. So if you wanna just get an idea of the floor plan for the property, you're simply able to ask it. So you can just say, show me the floor plan. It's given us the floor plan. And so this has pulled it back from our uh, database of properties and it's just pulled back the specific floor, floor plan. I've got a preview button, which you can hit preview. And this is going to go ahead and just give us the entire floor plan uh, in a big, big image. Um, and so obviously this is just a great uh, way to just in a conversational way, give them a set of data um, that they might want. And so that's obviously gone ahead. And if that's triggered, it's going to run a uh, if full plan contains redirect, it is going to redirect to this card title. And so this card title is just going to simply showcase the image of the floor plan. Um, and so obviously if you've watched the previous video, once again, uh, you'd know how to pull back the uh, sort of series of images from our Airtable database. Um, and so from here, we're then just continuing off to another capture where we can just have them freely ask another question. So if it hits else and they haven't asked for a floor plan check, we're going to be checking for location information. Um, and so checking for location information is simply just saying um, if they're asking for any sort of uh, nearby location. So it's able to use these series of examples and if it identifies that they are requiring location data, it's gonna redirect. Uh, and if they're not, it's just gonna continue. So obviously if we go ahead and redirect uh, from the redirect here, we are moving over to a set query. And so the set query is just taking our question and turning it into um, or taking the, the address of our property and turning it into a query. It's taking that query and sending it over to a block which extracts the specific location from this message. Um, you can see here, where's this primary school, primary schools, where's close to McDonald's, McDonald's. And so the reason we're doing this is because when we're using the Google Maps API, what we're doing is essentially just taking a location and putting that into Google Maps. And so if you've used Google Maps before, you probably have. If you just take, if you type McDonald's into Google Maps, it's uh, able to use its system to identify the nearest McDonald's. And so we're just tapping into that system to use that to find these nearest locations, send that back into voice flow and then give that to the user. And so additionally, we're adding a second set of prompting, which just says, if they ask this type of question, we want to actually redirect uh, the route. So if they wanna know where the property is on the map, where is the property, show it on the map, can I see the location? So that type of query, we wanna do a different sort of action. So we wanna say redirect, um, and so we're able to output redirect if that's the case. If not, it's just gonna output the uh, location that they've entered. We're sending this over to the, uh, just another if condition to check if it was redirect or not. Uh, if it wasn't, so if they've obviously typed in an, a location, we're able to uh, set a maps request, which just says, here's the property address address, here's the input input, uh, property settings. So we're essentially saying you need to output based on the formulas. So to make sure this is as accurate as possible, we need to both inquire the location that they want to go to as well as the actual property. And so we're setting this up using a set AI to essentially say, if they've inputted primary school, can you go ahead and connect the primary school um, or whatever information that they've provided alongside the address? And then we're able to take this address and send that into the Google Maps API. So it understands we're looking for a McDonald's, which is closest to this property, not just any McDonald's. And so once we've set that uh, maps request, we're just sending this over to the Google uh, Maps API. And so I won't be covering exactly how to use Google Maps API in this video. There's a ton of videos on the internet that just show you how to interact with the Google Maps API. Uh, you're essentially able to just go into Google and generate a uh, sort of a webhook and with its um, key, and then you're able to just send a text message. It's, it really is quite simple. You're able to send a text message to the API and it will pull back uh, the series of information that you're looking for. And once you've done that, you're obviously using some JavaScript steps to pass the data. And once you've done that, because we are looking at um, not just the location information. So this, this first step, uh, let's say if I wanted to know where the nearest McDonald's was, this first step is just finding the address of that McDonald's. And this second Google Maps API, which is a different, this is the Maps uh, API. Let's say this one was the Places API. So just two different uh, endpoints we have to send to. This one is now actually taking two sets of information. And so this is taking the our, our property address as well as the location that we're looking to go to. And so we're able to use this uh, API to pull back the estimated time of uh, arrival. And so that's the sort of seven minute drive time or whatever information uh, it needs, as well as the sort of distance in miles or kilometers or however you want to set it up. We're able to uh, get that information, uh, more precise information to give that back to the user. 
So once you've ran this maps API, it's gonna move over to a JavaScript step. This is just taking that data and turning it into some variables here, distance text and duration text. So it's the distance as in the miles and then duration as in the time. It's gonna move that over to a response AI block, which is then just taking that information, putting it all into a prompt and then spinning it out as a little message. And so that's that message that was put under the uh, actual uh, map here. So this information as well as um, all the information that would have popped up uh, earlier. So once it's done that, it's then after gonna give you the map. So obviously we're using an iframe widget. So this is um, something you can do in voice flow by just typing in the sort of iframe code. Um, and so once you've done that, putting in the SRC as the map SRC, which is just the uh, map address. And so you're able to essentially just take this and send this um, to the Google Maps and it's going to be able to actually just put that map um, as a as an embed on the actual chatbot. And so that's what you're seeing here. Um, obviously this is using Voice Glow, um, but it doesn't require anything from Voice Glow. I'm just using this for the purpose of this uh, interface. So if the redirect is triggered, it's gonna move over to the uh, these sort of top blocks here, which is just taking that uh, information directly to the map SRC. So that's just taking that address um, so here address is the variable of our property that we've inquired about. It's going to take that in JavaScript and send it over to a map SRC that was generated here. Obviously that's just the Google Maps embed place with your key and address. It's then just going to send that into the iframe and output that um, as a as the iframe embed as the Google Maps. And that's just going to go directly back to the start again. So this is the photo check as well. So we're just able to say um, if they're actually asking for if we're asking for a photo, so photo check. Can I see some images? Can I see some photos? Can I see the bathroom? It's gonna send that over to, once again, same system. It's just going to run a um, if condition. And then what we've got set up is a generate carousel. So this is something that I haven't covered, but it's just a um, set AI that generates a carousel. So a voice flow carousel using the AI prompt. Once it's generated that using the series of listing images, we're just sending that into a custom action, which can actually run that code. So I'll show you how this works. If I just want to show me some images, it's going to run that through our process, detect that they're actually looking for some images of the property. It's going to go ahead and take all the properties from the database or property images from the database and just give us all of those images in the generated uh, carousel format. So we can see here that's now loaded. So this is obviously the property that we inquired on and it's got this series of images for that property. So we're able to just say, show me some images and now we've got some images and we can hit preview. And so that's just gonna open up in a new tab just like this in the full screen. And so that's how we're able to run all these series of different actions. And so this is very similar to something that you'd see with the GPTs. Um, obviously when you're pulling, uh, asking questions and then the functions run and the actions run, this is essentially a similar system that I've built out, but we're obviously given a lot more customizability and how we want it to run with the set AI, we're actually generating the prompt. So we've built the prompt, which is essentially the action or what runs the action. We've built it ourselves. And so we're able to build this um, all out just like this. And so just for this demo that I was uh, showing somebody, I've built out it four times for the four different um, property types. Obviously you can, and it'd be better to build this as, actually as a component and then just run that component based on a set of variables. But um, this is just a quick setup that I was doing. So lastly, this is obviously also connected to a response AI that is trained on the listing description and all of the property details. So we can just ask it any question about the actual property. Uh, if none of the sort of functions we've built trigger, it'll just run the regular question. So if I demo that here, we can just ask, um, what are some of the transport options? So we're able to just ask this question and hopefully it's able to pull back some information from the actual uh, listing description that was stored within our database. So it's going to actually look at that information, run that through our question with the simple AI step. And we're just going to be able to get a response that says here, the main transport options this property includes bus and train services. Um, and so you can hear uh, services on Picton Road, Liverpool City Centre. So we'll obviously just pull back a series of information that comes just directly from that listing description. And so we're able to obviously run all these functions um, and, and really informative details, as well as just simply answer the simple questions. Now, if you want to get access to this part of the template, I'm going to have this in my free resource hub, which you can sign up for in the description. It also comes with 10 plus chatbot and automation templates that you can get alongside it as well.